Tom Leggins. Tom, why? Tom, I'm a retard. I allowed a woman to live in my house. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love you. Ooh, thank you. Thank you for all the advice you've given me. To everyone who's listening to Tom right now, listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. Make it personal. Don't let, you know, the other person just find out because of other people. Make it personal. Uh, we're done. Thanks for everything. Boom. Wow. First of all, I just want to say that you really revolutionized my life. I'm 20 years old, and I've been with so many girls ever since I started listening to you at 18. I don't want to know your last name. I'll come over, get the job done, get the hell out. <laughs> yeah, see, that would be perfect. To all get you have to do is call me when you need me. I come over like the plumber, okay? I come over, I work <laughs> on your pipes. <laughs> yeah. My goal with my son is when he gets older, hopefully you're still on the air if you're not. I'm going to teach him like it's one-on-one to, to the best of my ability. Yes, it has to be passed down from generation to generation. Tom, are you hitting on me? Because I like it. I'm thinking, what does it sound like to you? <laughs> Sounds like we got to go on a date, Tom. Getting the job done. So, Chicks do not go to nightclubs to meet nice guys. Exactly. Chicks go to nightclubs to drink so they reduce their inhibitions so they can do things that later they will regret. I don't see why people can't just enjoy what they have. Life is short. Why are people in such a rush all the time to turn something into something that maybe you don't want it to be? I mean, if you're happy as you are, why can't you enjoy it? Do you know how many women regret their time with me? Do you know how many women I did things with that to this day they look back in disgust? Oh my God. <laughs> I, you want to be that guy. You want to be the guy she's complaining about to the nice guy. Yeah. You don't want to be the nice guy. Because exactly. the nice guy is going to get the missionary position, and that's all he's going to get. Now Debbie knows that Jay is not coming back. She okay. knows. Isn't the important thing that she got the information? But the only thing is a phone call saying, hello, I'm getting a divorce, and that's it. You know. But you it's never. It, that is never it. Can we just try one more time? Come on! From Montebello, California, it's the Tom Likas Show. I got a theory on why they're doing that. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Here we are with another live broadcast from Montebello, California. Here we are at the QC 2020 Night Club at Quiet Cannon in Montebello. And you can join us here. And uh, we are here with our Friday edition of Wide Open Telephones. Somebody is going to win a trip to Las Vegas to see Oscar De La Hoya. Go up against Manny Pacquiao. That's coming up in December in Las Vegas. And somebody here is going to be going. Have you guys all entered the contest? Yeah! All right. Somebody's going to win. All you have to do to win is come out here and uh, you'll get yourself entered. And uh, somebody will be going home with the tickets to Las Vegas. It's going to be very exciting. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show here. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should talk about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. Yes, if you're not fascinating, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you have to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TAW. 1-800-5800-866. Say hello, everybody, to the like Come out and see the lovely Light Kent. They're here with me on stage. And uh, you get the Light Kent. You get Oscar De La Hoya, the, the tickets to the fight. And, of course, the usual craziness that goes with our live broadcast. So uh, come on out. It's the QC 2020 nightclub just off the 60 freeway in Montebello. Quiet Cannon. Here we are. All right. Thank you, girls. Thank you, the Light Kent. Everybody give the Light Kent a hand. 
All right, your telephone call's coming up. Anything can happen here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Your telephone calls are coming up next. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Show coming to you from Montebello. Wide open telephones. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Robert. How's it hanging, Tom? Hanging right as usual, pal. Y- yes, sir. You are my father. You are my idol, man. Oh, yeah. I'm calling to talk about that GM buyout. You mean the bailout? The bailout, buyout, bailout, same difference to me. Okay. I'm calling it a crop, Tom. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's about time people take responsibility for what they've done. You know what I mean? These people had an opportunity to make, you know, make some money. There's no one bailing me out on my GM car note. You know what I mean? That's right. There's no one helping me on my house. My house, you know, the, the, the value is diminished. You know what I mean? I, I I owe twice as much as my house house is worth. No one's helping me on that. Right. You know what I mean? That's right. So it's about time us us people stood up for what we stand for, and uh, you know don't these people are paying. Okay. So <laughs> so what you're saying is, if GM goes out of business, who cares? Who cares? You know what I mean? They had a chance. These big wigs messed up. You know what I mean? And it, it's it's about time we take a stance and not bail them out. All right, Robert, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Jason on the Tom Likas Show from Montebello. Hello. Come. Jason. It's DTB Day. Is it? I'm following your rules, Dad. I made a mistake and let her semi-move in. I just got one question for you, Dad. What's that? Do I take her bags back to her grandma's house, or do I just leave them out front? Leave them out front, baby. Don't you be doing her any favors. All right. I got you, Dad. Blow me up. By the way, did you change the locks and everything? Absolutely. Just got done changing them about an hour ago. I love that. Nothing about six bags, and they're going out in the front. Oh, baby. Does she have any idea this is coming? Uh Uh-uh. Not at all. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I mean, she she's not a dumb person. She probably, she knows that there's some friction, but she doesn't know it to this extent. I'm just, I made a mistake by letting her stay here too long. And how did you end up doing that? I mean, you've been a listener for a while. Where'd you get the idea that this would work? She was, I was giving her a month to get into a new spot on her own. It's been two months, and I'm not going down that road. Very nice. Messed up, Tom. I was a nice guy. She'll be finding a new spot tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Thanks again, Dad. Jason, me up. Jason, let us know how it goes. I'll blow you up. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Cheryl on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. You know, uh, of course, the official greeting of the Tom Likas Show is hello. Oh, well, hello. Yes. Anyway, listen, and I'm sure you know, but I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but the concern I have with the bailout is that we need, the same way that we backed up the airlines when they bankrupted, because we can nationalize the airplanes, the airlines, in event of national security issue, we need those factories to stay open in the event, God forbid, we need to build tanks and trucks, and GM builds a lot of stuff for the military, and I think we need to think about that. If the military wants to buy Hummer from GM, they're more than welcome to do that. Right. But I don't believe the taxpayers should be bailing out a company that has known for years that gasoline was going to go up to $4 a gallon, that nobody would be able to afford to drive the SUVs and the big trucks anymore, that everyone's oh, going to switch small that. cars. They have ignored. They have ignored what's going on in the world. Why should they so, be rewarded yeah. for that? No, and obviously it doesn't send a very nice message when the CEOs, you know, fly in and they're, you know, 
private jets with the, banging their tin cup for money. I'm, you know, I totally agree with you. I just wonder if we're going to end up paying for this one way or the other, Tom, with, you know, welfare or unemployment. I mean, are we going to end up paying this? For, is the taxpayer going to put this bill one way or the other, and it's just how we label it? Well, I do think a lot of the people working for the big three, if the, if the big three were liquidated, would end up working for the other car companies. I mean, yeah. Toyota builds cars here. Nissan builds cars here. BMW builds cars here. Mercedes builds cars here. So uh, I imagine a lot of those guys go to work for the other companies. And you think that'll absorb? I don't know. I'm just wondering. We're already, you know, the whole joke about how GM's the biggest HMO in the country. But I'm just wondering. I, I really, you, you really gave me pause for thought to think about this. Like, are we going to end up paying for it anyway? That's what I worry about. Well, oh, you know, oh, to a certain oh. extent, we, we, look, for, to a certain extent, we're going to pay for it anyway. To a certain extent, we do. Anyone who buys an American car from right. General Motors is paying $1,500 towards the legacy costs of previous employees. No, I get that. You're paying get, it now. I, Anytime you buy a GM trunk, you're paying for people who've already retired to get their health benefits. Yeah. Nobody, right. You know and what? That, Nobody's paying for my health benefits when I retire. I'll tell you what. I hear that. I hear that. So uh, why, you know, the, the point is people have voted with their feet. And and they have stopped buying American cars to the same extent that they buy other cars. Yeah. And, I mean, you're, you're you know, it's kind of like what Mitt Romney wrote in the journal about let them declare bankruptcy and, and sell off some of their you know, wait nooses around their neck and well, see if that's and that's the other thing. If they if they declare bankruptcy, they can get out of their union contracts. Right. And th and maybe adopt more of a Southwest Airlines model where they're not a union shop and then you know anybody can... wants to come back and work for fifteen dollars an hour, they'll be welcome to come back. I agree. That's well, I always appreciate uh, listening to your. I, I, it's what's impressive about you is that you're just so knowledgeable about so many things. You have book smart and you're street smart. That's awesome. Well, thank you for that. Well, take care. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too. Appreciate the call, Marcius on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, TL. How you doing today, man? I'm doing okay. How are you? Man, I'm just chilling at my dog on the loft apartment in downtown Los Angeles, California. But I just want to let you know, since I've been listening to you, my mind is secure. And everything that you said about these women are definitely on the right correction. There we go. And you buy them a ring, first thing they do, Tom, is go to the dog on jewelry store and want to find out if it's real. Right, and how much it's worth. How many times did your girl go down there with the ring just to get it evaluated, get it appraised? Mm-hmm. And after the dog won first time, I took it away and then bought her another one, and she still did not understand. After the fact, I don't have time to play games anymore. Hey, Tom, I'm chilling in my dog on loft apartment. Got my dog on the radio down and Brother ATO. Man, just me and you out here in Los Angeles, California. Do you feel me, baby? Sometimes it feels that way. That's right. All right, Marcius. Thanks for the call. It's Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. There, Tom. I want to agree with that lady you were just talking to. Right. The big three cannot use our taxpayer dollars for this bailout. Well, it's the... going to be industry after industry getting all this money strings attached. Well, write this down. Uh, once the uh, change of administration happens, uh, the auto companies will get bailed out. I'm opposed to it, and you should let every uh, one of your politicians know you're opposed to it. But trust me when I tell you, the United Auto Workers worked hard to get Barack Obama in there, and now they're going to be repaid. It's not even about the auto workers. Honda, Toyota, BMW operate low-cost, non-union operations. And they still pay their employees generously. Well, what I'm saying is that's why the bailout is going to happen. It can't be a free ride for management or labor. Oh, they'll make it look like they put conditions on it. And you better promise to build green cars. Pad so do that. And, and they'll the be free like, okay. <laughs> and then they'll get their money. I don't know. I'd say we should let them fall and make way for newer, smarter companies. 
Well, I think everybody agrees with you, except the people in Washington who feel they owe it to the United Auto Workers. Uh, let's face it. I mean, uh, we're talking now about a welfare program is what we're talking about. If we are paying people to make a product that doesn't make any profit, it's a welfare program. That's all it is. I blame the quality of their cars. Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, again, the American people have decided what cars they like best. Yeah, Japanese the, well, cars. I, when it comes to trucks, they like American best. When it comes to small cars, they like Japanese best. That's the way it is. Yeah, but you can't go with trucks with the way gasoline is well, now. The v you have the just... V uh, you have just spelled out the whole problem right there. Paul on the top, like his show, hello. Thank you for that. Kyle on the top, like his show, hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, I'd like to talk about this bailout. Um, I think Americans should take care of Americans and start buying American cars. Why? Well, this, you know, we have such a problem with or not a problem, but we're always taking care of every other country. We're like the, you know, uh, we're like the nice guys. Let's take care of our So what you're background. saying is people shouldn't buy the best product for the lowest price. Is that right? I don't, I don't think we don't, we don't have the best products. We've got a for, I said product. for the lowest price. The lowest price. Right. The best we've product we've got, for the lowest price. We've got cars that I are I ask you a question. The best product for the lowest price. Not affordable. Best product for the lowest price. You're saying people should not buy the best product for the lowest price. Right? No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, what if the best I... product for the lowest price comes from another country? Well, look what we're up against. Again. We're, we're, up, the... we're up against looking at a bailout of $25 billion. We've already given them. Uh, we shouldn't. Billion. We shouldn't give them a penny. Right. Exactly. We should let them fail. If they can't make it work, we should let them fail. Well, I, I think everybody's losing sight of taking care of our own homeland before we take care of. But you I, know, our, but I don't see why, if our, someone doesn't make the best product for the lowest price, I don't see why we should support them. <laughs> You're pretty difficult to uh, argue with. I have to admit that. You have to admit but that I, what I said is true. Okay, Tom. Um, don't you agree that people feel they buy the best product for the lowest price? Well, what's what's wrong with our our four trucks? Because I'm in best construction. Best product? Well, there's the people are not buying trucks. Well, I don't know. I, do you know why they're not? Do you know why they're not? You know? Do you know? Do you know why? Do you know why people are not buying trucks? Do I need to well, explain because, it to you? Because the, the gas. The, because well, the gas mileage. Gas prices, gas prices are half what they were over the summer. People are not buying trucks because here in California, there's an 8% unemployment rate, if you, in case you haven't noticed. And on top of that, even if you can afford to buy a truck, nobody's lending any money. Have you noticed that? Well, okay, you just made a point. The gas prices are lower now. But, but now, the point is, now we can go people, buy the trucks that we want. But people have stopped buying trucks. Well, now the gas prices are down. We can that doesn't mean they're going to stay down. Wheel. But that the reason the gas prices are down is because we're in a recession. Because less people are driving less miles. <laughs> okay, Tom. I just had to call in and, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Do a patriotic that, duty and say yeah, take care of America yeah, first. Yeah, right. Now you're going to fold like a house of cards, right? All right. There we go. Folded like a house of cards. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Danny on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, I just got turned on to your show and I just love it. You're fabulous. Thank you. Um, but I have a question for you. Yesterday you were talking about the whole economy and the retail and everything, and you mentioned something about J.C. Penney's closing a bunch of stores and yes. Pep Boys. Yes. And I, I'm a I work in retail in a for a shoe company. And I was sharing that with my with my staff today, and they're like, "No way, you're retarded. We would have heard about this, blah blah blah." I'm like, "No, it's true. It's totally true." And I just want to know where you got that info from, so I can prove my boss wrong. Well, it's pretty commonly <laughs> known. Just Google it. I mean, J.C. Penney's not going out of business. They are closing a certain number of stores. Oh, uh, right. Okay. That's Pep what Boys. I told them. Pep Boys is like closing a certain number. Yeah. Of stores. 
I don't remember the number because I'm not looking at it now. Whatever I read on the air is what I read on the air. Okay. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a secret. Linens and things going out of business. Mervyn's is going out of business. Shoe Pavilion right. is going out of business. And then you have a bunch of them that are not going out of business, but the Circuit City has filed for bankruptcy. Right. Okay. I just wanted to... Prove my boss wrong so he can apologize. <laughs> well, a uh, simple trip to, a simple trip to Google will solve your problem. Okay, thank you so much and keep up the good work. All right, Danny, thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. We are here in Montebello at Quiet Cannon, the QC twenty twenty nightclub. Somebody is going to win a trip to Las Vegas to watch. The big fight between Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao. It's coming up in December, and you could be there. All you have to do is show up here. Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Montebello. I'm here at the Lycats. I'm on stage at the QC 2020 nightclub at Quiet Cannon. Right up here at the Montebello Country Club. You can't miss us. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Give another hand to the Lycats here, everybody. The lovely Lycats. Thank you, girls. Thank you very much. The Lycats, everybody. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones here. Let's continue with uh, Roger on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what's up, buddy? Not much. How's it going? Hey, man, I wish I could be over there, but um, I'm over here in Los Angeles listening to your online stream in my office. And i got to say, I love your show, man. Thank you. Love it. Listening to it at 3, after work, kick it into my, in my, uh, in my car, and um, just really enjoy it. You have a great show, man. I really, really love it. Thank you very much. What I wanted to touch on was, you know, this L.A. car show. Uh, like I said, I live in Los Angeles, and um, I, I went there yesterday, the sneak peek. You know, once you walk around and you go over to the Chrysler, the Pontiacs, the, you know, everything else, the Fords, and um, you could see why they're, at, they're going out of business. What they put it on the floor is just garbage. I mean, you, you, walk, you see their stuff, and then you go over to, like, the Nissans, the, uh, the Toyotas, the Infinities, and everything else, the BMWs. And you're just like, whoa, you know, this is <laughs> this is awesome, and that's not awesome. That looks cheap. This looks awesome. This is a lot of craftsmanship. And all in all, that's what the American buyer is looking for: is a oh, styling car, good performance. Most, most, mostly, you know, good performance. You know, we all know what Ford stands for: fiction or and daily. So, um, you know, the Mustang. But when I think about American car, I only think about one thing: a Corvette. That's the only thing that really comes to mind. Well, all I'm going to say is, uh, look, uh, the American car companies have a great history, a great legacy. I don't have any personal feelings about these companies, not at all. Uh, mm. But I do believe that uh, the best man should win. And no, the company that produces well. the best product uh, should make the most money and uh, get the most credit. Of and course. the companies that can't get the job done, the people will decide which ones those are, and then they should either fix themselves or go away. I completely agree. I mean, Infinity comes to mind. You know, an amazing car, G35. You could get a G35 2005 uh, for 20 grand easily, 19 grand. A great car, great performance, looks styling, girls love it, you know, and it's just one of those things. And Americans are way, way behind of what American, not American, but um, what a car should look well, like. Well, I just saw an ad the other day. Nissan has a car for under 10 grand. Yeah, it does. It's I under mean, 10 you know, grand. Under ten grand, exactly. You know. What does it do? It looks nice. It performs well, and it looks styling. And all in all, that's what the American consumer is looking for. So it's just really sad that you know these these, these factories are going out of business. You know, I feel really bad for the people working, you know, at the factories. And it's just it's just one of those things that you know you got to move on, but you can't bail them out. You know, if anything, I think people should vote on this. Why not have a vote? You know, if they're going to use our money to bail them out, why can't we vote on it? Well, unfortunately, the people we voted for are representing us, and unfortunately, a lot of them owe a lot to the unions. And uh, so they're ultimately going to get what they want, which is a bailout, I think. Donovan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yeah, hey. I heard you uh, talk about uh, women that invite pets into their home. Man, I agree with you, and here's what happened. My girl, my girl took in a wild calico cat. 
and turned it into a pet. And this cat was deranged and seemed to come from that movie, The Pet Cemetery. No oh, joke. Oh, no. Yeah, man. And, uh, man, the cat would go crazy every time I'd use a microwave in the morning. It attacked the numbers. She'd invite it into the bedroom. It'd sleep under the duvet. And, man, I had enough. I lost sleep. It always attacked my kneecaps. The cat would go crazy. So I took it and I put it in the car. Gave it a car ride. Oh, by the way, I was allergic to it. My palms would get sweaty. My neck bone, my collarbones would itch. So I took the cat, took it on a car ride, Tom, about four hours away, because I've seen my uh, cousin, too. This is in uh, the North Bay, by the way, and I will DTB before Thanksgiving. But anyways, in the meantime, I took the cat and dropped it off next to a video, a video store. Got rid of it. DTC, dump that cat. <laughs> and uh, what did you tell your girlfriend? I didn't tell her anything. I just said it probably ran away because it was a wild cat with some kind of rabies or something, baby. <laughs> hey, you know what, Tom? What? I got a little present for you. I want to take you out this time. All right. Go ahead, Donovan. I want to take you out, uh, me, punching John Mayer style in the face with a straight right because I used to do a little boxing. All right, go ahead. Hey, John Mayer, come here, you little pretty boy. Yeah, and I ain't down with that new Beyonce song, Put a Ring on It. All these girls want to get married. All we want to do is put a condom wrapper in your garbage can in the bathroom. We ain't putting a ring on it. <laughs> What's up, Tabasco sauce in it? You're my dad, and I love you, man. Thank you, Donovan. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Greg on the Tom Lankin Show from Montebello. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hello, Greg. Hey, um, I live in Ventura. I work in L.A. most of the time. And uh, everybody's, I hear everybody's crying about the economy and, and, and the recession and all this. But you know what? I'm just a construction worker. And as far as I'm concerned, with this recession, bringing the gas prices down, I'm happy. I'm happy. And, uh, you know, you guys were talking yesterday about the gunsmith business nowadays. I don't see why, because uh, uh, most of, I think most of the people that are, that are committing these crimes with guns and stuff are... are Low-class people that aren't even making as much money as I am. So well, I don't think any high-class you know? people are, are committing crimes with guns. Do you? What? I don't think high-class people are committing crimes with guns. Do you? Of course they're no, low-class no. people. It's, it's the low-life guys that, that aren't, aren't, uh, aren't making any money. They don't have any jobs anyway. But uh, I don't see why anybody needs to be worried about it with this recession. Uh, I mean, anybody that... Uh, well, here in California, 8% of the people are unemployed. They're worried about it. Yeah. What if they don't uh, have a job like you? They might be worried about it, right? Yeah, I, I suppose, yeah. I mean, I'd come out and uh, do a broadcast at 3 in the afternoon. Look at all the people who are here to see me, for God's sake. You right, guys all right. have jobs? Right. Yes, no? Yeah. No or yes? Yes. Yeah. Are you drunk or sober? I'm sober. Not years. you. I'm talking to the crowd here, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you, I know, is sober. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Tom, I listened to you for probably three or four years now, every day on the way home from work. So uh, keep up the good work. I'm glad to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going great. Hey, uh, I was just calling to talk to you about the big three auto groups right there, and I just want to let you know, uh, I went down to the Ford dealer in uh, Glendale in uh, July to buy a new truck, and I had uh, $10,000 to put down. And I chose, you know, a nice F-150. It was about $22,000. Went in to go do the financing, all that. I got pretty decent credit, and they turned me down. Really? Really. So you were ready to buy, and you couldn't get a loan? Ready to buy, and they didn't want to get no. Uh, I got financing on a used car for about the same as I should be making payments on a new car, but they didn't want to give it to me. Wow. 
and I had the money to put down and everything, and they shot me down, and I don't see if they can't, you know, and I have a good job and everything, and they don't want to sell me a car. Why should we bail them out? Oh, there you go. Now, did you try your bank? I, I did. I tried the credit union, and they wanted a little poop. I have an interest rate, so, I, you know, I chose other chose another bank. I went with Bank of America, but you know, all in all, I'm still happy with my choice, but I just don't think that they should ever be bailed out if they're not willing to give a person with decent credit and a good job a car. All right, for that, Tom, it's Matthew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. I want to sure. make a few quick points. Yeah. I think the companies that should be bailing out these, uh, the big three, are the same companies that have kept American automotive industries in the dark ages for so many years, the oil companies. If the oil companies want us to keep burning gas in SUVs that run like crap. They should be bailing them out, not the American people. The second point I'd like to make, Tom, is that I think we should let these banks fold, and anybody with a bank note or a house note at that bank should just own their house outright because those are the people that spend money they don't have. What are they going to do with $2,000 a month that they would be paying the mortgage with? They're going to go out and buy big, big screen TVs, SUVs, and everything else. That's our economy stimulus. Let those banks fold. Let GM and Chrysler and Ford get bailed out by the oil companies because they've been their little B.I., you know, that it's just it's just BS that we're the ones on the hook for their being uh, 30 years behind the times as far as automotive technology. All right, Matthew, you've got it all figured out, for God's sake. Sean on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Dad. It's an honor to talk to you. I know. <laughs> you are a true philanthropist. You are doing work, and I appreciate that, as does everyone else out here listening. Thank you. I wanted to tell you about a cougar I was dating. She was uh, 15 years my senior. And uh, let's see, I, I went over to her house one night, cooked dinner for her. She had three dogs. She had a, a one large old Rottweiler, uh, a little Cocker Spaniel, and then some mutt. Anyway, I cooked this dinner. She was full. She begins to feed the dog at the table off of her plate, this, this dinner that I cooked for us, uh, you know, over the last hour and a half. So that, that really pissed me off. And then we ended up in her bedroom, of course, and uh, she ends up feeding the damn dog in the bed while I'm trying to sleep. Oh, not, not in the bedroom, the damn bed. That's that, outrageous. That's of, yeah, it was ridiculous. So, so. What, did you, what did you tell your girl? Uh, she wasn't my girl, but... Uh, that was the last straw. That was the last time I stayed over there. I didn't have to tell her anything. I don't think I need. I, I don't think I needed to. Uh, I think there anything. are chicks out there who like their animals more than they like guys, and you know what? They should be cat ladies for their entire lives and be done with it. That's right. She obviously made her choice uh, clear to me, so I made my I made that real easy for her. So. Makes Thanks sense. for my call, Tom. Sean, I did it as a public service. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. You could be the winner. Somebody here is going to Las Vegas to see Oscar De La Hoya fight Manny Pacquiao on Saturday, December 6th on HBO Pay-Per-View. It's got to be uh, just an amazing fight. Manny Pacquiao, one of the hottest fighters out there. We all know Oscar De La Hoya. And this is going to be one hell of a boxing match. Somebody here is going to win. If you would like to be uh, eligible to win this trip to Las Vegas to see the biggest fight this year, uh, just come on out with the QC 2020 nightclub at Quiet Cannon, the Bottom Metal Country Club. Just take the 60 freeway to the Garfield exit, and you will find us all here, all of uh, all the drunken reprobates with no jobs, all the boozers. We'll see you with more of your telephone calls. We continue. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. And here we are in Montebello with the boys at 1-800-5800-TOM. Anything goes here, anything at all. We got the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. That means we can take more and more and more and more phone calls. We've been trying to get through. Just keep dialing. We'll get you all in. 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to Alonzo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. First time, long time, man. Hi, son. 
just wanted to comment on these uh, big three uh, companies out there that are going to go out of business. I'm in the recce yard business, and con- you know the way the economy is right now? We've been uh, really real slow. But uh, to me, if GM goes out of business, it's uh, it's a real good upside to me. I uh, wreck GM, and uh, all these parts that I'm holding on to right now will be worth big bucks in the future. Really? Yes, sir. Look at you. So you're hoping GM goes down and fight? Oh, man, I'm hoping GM stops producing parts tomorrow. GM starts producing parts tomorrow, maybe this cutthroat business that we live in, uh, you know, people will start grinding you down on prices, and you'll be able to work what a part is really worth. Wow, look at you. You know? So you're, I mean, against, you're against the bailout. Oh, I'm, I'm totally against the bailout. I mean, uh, I, it's, it's ridiculous that they're uh, asking for so much money. You know, uh, these, these, I know these Escalades that people drive nowadays, they're worth big bucks, but, you know, it's, they're not selling right now. Nothing's selling. Yeah, well, we've certainly heard all about that. Uh, thank you for the call there, Alonzo. Here's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Doing okay, son. Yeah. A couple of... All, First thing... all right, we're going to get a better connection on you, and we're going to say hi to Todd on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Todd. Hello, Todd. How's it going, buddy? It's going great. Hey, man, this bailout is a bunch of crud. Why are we going to give these people money to keep producing a crappy product? Well, that, you know, again, I I don't think it's my place to say whether it's a crappy product. The American people have voted. That's it. Exactly. And, but we're, it's it's be called simple. the free market. Them out, they're going to keep making a crappy product. Then we're going to find ourselves in this position 10 years down the road. Well, again, uh, you know, it's not for me to say if it's a crappy product because, uh, honestly, we all know that the big three make some good products. They make the best trucks. Uh, the big vehicles, they, they can't be beaten. Uh, but right now, that's not what people are buying. And so uh, if the American people have voted, that's that. Exactly. And, you know, you know, you got BMW, Hyundai, Toyota, they're opening more plants. They don't seem to have a problem. Let's get these CEOs. With their ten and fifteen million dollar salaries, get that pencil going and figure out how to make a good car. Makes sense to me, Todd. Here's Alex on the Tom Likas show from Montebello. Hello, <laughs> Alex. You busy over there, Alex? Hello. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Yes, Alex. That is Alex. Yeah, what are we smoking today, Alex? Uh, it's about a girl. Uh, she, t- she told me that uh, I've been doing it, beating it for a month, and then she, out of the blue, she told me that she's married. What? She told me that she's married. I'll tell you what, I can't hear you, so uh, once again, Dean is going to get a better, a better connection for you. Wow. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Jaime. Oh, of course, Dean didn't get a better character. He just hung up on him. Eh, screw him. Jaime on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Jaime. I'm from Monterey Park. What's that? Say it again. Monterey Park. Something about pork. I'm from Monterey Park. I, I can't hear him either, so let's go to Bob on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay, Bob. Hey, glad that you're out there today. Listen, uh, I don't know if you've heard this, but somebody wants to use uh, the oil company uh, profits to uh, fund uh, that bailout. What do you think? Well, I think uh, that I don't think we should mandate that the oil companies do that. Uh, certainly, gas-guzzling vehicles are the oil company's best friend, so... Maybe it's in the best interest of the oil companies to do it voluntarily. That's true. That's true. Besides, they would profit either way. Well, uh, certainly if they keep the uh, companies that build gas guzzlers in business, they would uh, benefit somehow. Yeah, of course, people aren't buying those cars even if they're in business. So I don't know. I think think it's a win-win for them. Hey, do you have uh, an NFL team you like? Well, you have to understand, because we don't have a team here in Los Angeles... 
Um, I, I tend to watch the best team that I can see on TV, whoever that is. Uh, how, how about if I were to make you an honorary Tennessee Titans fan, huh? Tennessee Titans. I can't even imagine That's... going to Tennessee to watch a game. Oh, come on. We're undefeated, baby, all the way. Ha, have you always been a Tennessee Titans fan? I have. I have I have football from the inaugural season. Never been an Oiler. Were you a Houston Oiler fan? I was not, but I, the, day, the year they became a Tennessee Titans fan, that's the year I became a football fan. Really? All the way. Hey, thank you for your time, Tom. Bob, thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Jay. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. God hey, bless Jay. you, man. Yes. I've been listening to you for two years, a first-time caller. I love your show, Tom. I wish we had somebody like you in New York. Yeah, well, uh, you, you, to be on the air in New York, you have to be 75 years old, or your name has to be Sean Hannity. <laughs> That's how you get out of New York. Tommy, I love your show so much. I've been listening to you for two years, man. I mean, you are the greatest. Well, you are you. like my dad. I just got it true. Hey, listen, all I tell you about the economy, about the bailout, the bottom line is that I'm with it. Why not invest the money? And, uh, let, you know, and then just uh, uh, see what happens, where it's going to take us. We need the money. They need the money. I would say yes. Why not? We well, all need the money. You know, everybody got to work. But That's everybody isn't line. getting a bailout. All the people who can't pay their mortgages, they're not getting a bailout. All the people well, who can't afford to make their car payments, they're not getting a bailout. All the people who lost their jobs, they're not getting a bailout. Tommy, I agree with you. But wait a minute. Why we invest on the world $10 billion every morning? You cannot invest on the, on the, on the car it makers. Is, you know it is I'm not our... our by the way, Obama is going to end the war, bottom line. And we shouldn't be investing in that either. Hey, Tommy, i tell you one thing, man. I'm going to give somebody else a chance, man. The bottom line is that I love your show. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm Jay from the Bronx, New York. I've been here two years, and as soon as I got on the call, my boss told me, you got to listen to Tommy. I love you, Tom, and good luck, right. and keep it up. Thank you. And it only took a minute and 37 seconds for him to get it in, that he's from the Bronx, New York. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.